So although we've been talking a lot about this, um, as you look at the world, if you were a U.S. private fund, you'd be looking probably at energy and renewables. Um, this is again um, total PPP investment commitments in current U.S. dollars in billions in low and middle income countries. Um, the reason I mentioned just low and middle is that um, it, it's interesting to see where they're, um, this is the World Bank, uh, and, and looking at, um, looking at, uh, at where some of these countries, East Asia, South Asia, Sub-Sahara, are, are putting their money. And uh, you can see again that uh, here's the early days, very little, and early days, not long ago, uh, up through about 19, uh, 1994, then we had the Latin America PPP Bonanza uh, back in, uh, in, in the, uh, in, in the mid-90s. And then we had the PPP crisis in the early part of the 2000s. And then we had the PPP boom that seems to be ongoing. So many of these countries are, are desperately looking to uh, increase PPP investment. As I mentioned, a good example is Chile. Canadians are heavily in Chile because the government of Chile just embraces these. Uh, they're very good to deal with. Um, this shows you uh, the breakdown of the investor universe. So these are investors, not developers. So you can see that the majority of money is coming out of North America. Uh, the second would then be uh, Europe, and Asia, and then the rest of the world. So Europe and North America are the two largest sources of investment in infrastructure around the world. And um, down here, it breaks down the funds. These are what we call unlisted funds, and they're by far the largest. Then we get direct investment, the market direct and that would be the pension funds and then we get the the, uh, the listed funds they're very small so you can see that the unlisted funds um, there's a lot of big Wall Street funds in this I'm trying to think of the name but um, I'm sure BlackRock and there's all kinds Carlisle group is probably involved but so the majority of these are, are in these unlisted funds where they go and they raise four or five billion dollars private private placement um, and, and so, the, the, but the, the, uh, the, the pension funds are certainly um, a, a very important player uh, for a wide market. And they continue uh, to, to create uh, a fair amount of investment capital. Um, if we look at the, I just pulled off uh, Pregrin. Um, uh, numbers. Uh, if you look at the breakdown of infrastructure deals, uh, you'll notice again that the majority of these, these are just deals in this quarter, okay? Um, whether that has any relevance, I don't know. So this is quarter two of 2013. You'll notice that North America was about 10%. Uh, Europe was almost 70% of the sorts of those deals. Uh, if you look over here, you'll see that m the majority were, were social and energy. So again, that's just a snapshot in time. But what this indicates is if you're going to be in this business, you've got to see what's happening in the world. And it's one because of the long-term nature, um, you're going to have to monitor, you know, in a, in a broader, because this is just a snapshot. You've got to watch where the world's going, uh, and you know I, I would assume uh, that there's a lot of uh, opportunity for people in this field when you begin to see how little expertise there is in this business and how much money and how many deals are going on. You had you have a slide up to show the PPP meltdown, the breakdown years. What was that all about? 
This one? Yeah. You know what the PPP crisis is? What do we learn from that? Oh, um, there, there was a, um, there was a real pushback uh, in PPP starting back here, particularly in the UK, Australia. I mean, all of a sudden, governments that were sort of, you know, it was time to go against them, and um, uh, the the whole PPP was starting to get bad name in the press. And uh, the UK media were really after them, and so they they were there was a lot of suspicion around this PPP, particularly by um, the UK government and, and even Cameron, the Prime Minister now. Um, and, and then of course it, then we hit the the wall in uh, in a way. So that was sort of the crisis. It was real questioning. Um, of this race to embrace PPPs. Um, but Latin America had back, had, you know, earlier had been using them because they thought that was the easy way to do things. And again, there was a lot of corruption, bad deals. And so, you know, whenever, whenever things go really well, <laughs> they're usually followed by a period where they don't go so well. Well, are we looking at... Uh Bad times right ahead of us. Are we? And you described it's up and down. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that uh, I think the biggest issue we're going to have is the ability of countries to attract investment dollars. So going back to my slide yesterday, if we've got 45 trillion dollars worth, uh, you know, remember the McKinsey slide? There's going to be such competition for capital that the countries who make it, who attract it and get it. Otherwise, American investors are going to be, I mean, they have to put the money in. So they're going to be going offshore to where they can get the, the returns. You know, you know what I'm saying? That uh, if, if you don't make it comfortable for them to invest in PPPs here, they'll, they're, they'll move offshore, like CalPERS and others. So I think that, that it's going to be country by country. And I think it's going to be harder and harder uh, to, to, to get that capital. I mean, we've, we've been able to attract billions of dollars. Can we, can we continue to do that? I, I don't know. Canada. We're hoping that we'll, we'll keep the momentum, but that's a question mark. So what the government is doing is they're very conscious of keeping the pipeline busy so that five years out, these companies say, well, we can't pull out. Look what's coming down the pipeline. So it's like any business. If you don't have a pipeline of projects, then you won't sustain the industry, and they'll just move on. Well, now, do you see the, the activity of uh, British Columbia's uh, infrastructure organization? You said that, that group is literally selling their services outside the country to other areas. Yeah. Yep. They're selling them to Oregon. They're selling them to about four states. Most the United States, they're not going to... Uh, no, there's too much business in the U.S. to begin to look at South America. I mean, there is a little bit of that, but uh, infra uh, infrastructure, uh, uh, Partnership BC are, in fact, selling and their services uh, to help other uh, states get, you know, uh, get up and going. Uh, infrastructure Ontario said they won't do that, just as a policy. Um, they, they probably feel that it's going to stretch them too much. They've got so much in the pipeline. Um, so it's an interesting, it's interesting business. Um, but you, in order to sustain it and get the money, I think you have to have a pipeline of projects. And each company is looking at roughly bidding on. In Canada, kind of rule of thumb is two, two bids to two and a half bids a year. And the rule of thumb is you have to win every one out of three. So pushing one out of four, but that's, those are kind of the rules of the game. We want to win one out of three. Uh, so we don't bid on everything. We only bid where we think we can win. And uh, we, can, we can probably handle, uh, like I talked to one of our big contractors, Ellis Dawn, and they said, we can't go in any more bids. We're, our book is full. So now, 
the SPV is going to say, look at these contractors have got so much, how are we going to keep it going? So the whole market aspect is really fascinating. Uh, and you've got big contractors. I, I've heard that uh, both Bechtel and Fleur are in on the, the remember I put the six and a half billion dollar one we're issuing? I, I don't think there's anyone in Canada that can handle that. I think only the big U.S. companies can, can get bonding for that kind of project. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, India will recover. Uh, China doesn't really, I mean, you know better than I do. Um, I don't think you use public-private partnerships in China. Do you? Anyone know? Indonesia. So, you know, people forget a place like Indonesia, fifth largest country in the world. And they're, they're now going strong. Big country. So, I, yeah, I don't, when you've got the rate of urbanization that we're going to face, I mean, what's China going to build? 65 new cities in the next 30 years? You can't build cities without infrastructure. At some point, they're going to run out of credit. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm a little biased, obviously. I think that, oh. I'll just, I can end with this. And then 2.30, you want to wrap up, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah.